I started mini painting last January. It's been quite the journey. 65 minis painted and 35 scale models built. What have I learned? Well, I've learned a lot. Let's see what you can learn too. I started mini painting last January, and it's been quite the journey. 65 minis painted, 35 scale models built, and I've learned a lot over that time. So dear viewer, if you were to start on this journey today, where would you be and how did you begin? So I've never really picked up a paintbrush since middle school, let alone a miniature. So I was no joke, yes, very shy to go into this super nerdy store and pick up some Orc B Snaga boys, but I did it. I actually only watched one Midwinter's Minis video and then I was like, man, this is the hobby for me and I was off and I dedicated too much money into the hobby instantly. So thank you guy for that addiction. I was pretty split in the beginning between Orcs and Sisters of battle. Uh, I like green things, but then I also like women in power armor, so you know, it was a hard choice. Eventually I decided orcs because I find a meme about purple orc funny, so I decided to capture that by painting these guys a little purple here or there. Now, these miniatures are not with a steady hand. I was not familiar with the colors that I purchased, so my first guy ended up like this. Uh, lots of details aren't noticeable on this, and you wouldn't notice them on a table, but of course here under a macro lens, you're going to notice all of the mistakes I've made. But from a distance, you don't really notice, except for the fact that he's brown and the rest of the guys have purple trimmings on them. I also went overboard with the black wash from Vallejo on them. It definitely didn't help the overall look. They just got really muddy, and it'd take a while before I moved away from washes and decided to try and create more natural shadows or just move away from that artificial uh, shadow and shaded area and the crevices using washes. Following along with that journey from orcs, my next big orc came this orc boss that I painted around March. By now I decided my army's colors would be purple and pink and that my orcs would have a carnival theming. I really enjoyed the Games Workshop blood texture paint and I kind of went overboard with this guy, but it does kind of help cover up the uneven paint job I did. I tried a bleeding, you know, kind of look and gore on it and it just looked really bad. I also attempted my first try at wet blending there up on the gun, but again, it didn't really come out that great, but I did try it. The gore thing really stands out because looking at it now, it just kind of looks like candy, but I was trying to copy Maverick paints if you've ever seen his shorts or work on Instagram. But I should mention that he has access to certain tools that I don't have here in the States, it seems. I tried to copy it using Mod Podge and super glue, and it, it, it does look like a gummy bear or something is stuck in his axe. Around this time I also picked up some space wolves and I painted up the whole combat patrol of these guys. Uh, this guy is pretty emblematic of the entire combat patrol. It's a really uneven yellow trim followed by a light blue base coat on them and that's it. It was a really messy and rushed paint job and it was also the first time I tried to do like uh, non-metallic metals fundamentals and really like blending basics to try and get dynamic marines, but they ended up looking more like toys than my orcs ever did. Around this time I also picked up some D&D monsters, and while I'm very mixed on this whole resin thing that they got going on at this range of miniatures, I was quite happy with the blending work I had on this lizard guy, as well as the axe on the frost giant. His cuffs though are incredibly ugly and not great. At about April I had picked up some custom stuff from PAX East that definitely widened my palette for painting miniatures. Uh, I painted some of these guys up as gifts the first time I was painting gifts. Again, there is a huge focus on blending tones. I decided that instead of tackling metals that I would try and get really good skins and furs. Honestly, these minis are just really fun to build and paint. I'll link them down below if you do want them. By May, I finally picked up some veteran guardsmen because they were just looking awesome and I wanted to use reference to paint these guys. So I looked at the World War I route and decided to mix the French and Germans who lined the trenches of that time. This is why their helmets are blue. I really tried hard with the dry brushing here, probably overdoing it, but trying to get this snowy ash look 
really as if these guys had been battle hardened and sitting in the trenches for a long time. June would be the first time I attempt freehand designs and I got this cute little pigeon that I picked up at PAX. Her book has a bird and a smiley face on it. Not really incredible or exciting, but I think she's really cute and I love these little birds that I picked up. Around this time, I also painted my first AOS model. Some Stormcast Eternals because I'm super, super original and not boring and I decided to paint them inspired by a certain Undertale character. So yeah, the army that I'm gonna have, which is gonna be Stormcast, will be in the colors of Undyne from Undertale. I did try to dry brush some metallics, but I really haven't found a metallic I love yet. However, I did pick up some scale 75 things recently, so maybe those will change my mind. By August, really, I got into 3D printing, and this was a whole hobby on top of everything else. Uh, by now, I had printed uh, hundreds of models, and this is where I had started to paint pinups, and I was really proud of this one. You've seen this one before on the channel. It is, it is the, the, the burgeoning birth of my degeneracy. <laughs> I mean, really, if I was a fantasy race, I'd be a goblin or an orc. And look, I'm a sucker for thick goblins. What can I say? So I was really happy with how steady my hand had become and the practice that I had been putting in. The blending was okay on her and the coverage is honestly not that amazing, but at a decent distance, you take in exactly what I want you to take in, her personality. I even added gloss varnish over her personality so that way you uh, noticed how much character she had. The model for that one is free by the way, so of course, again, it'll be linked down below. She's fan art of Weaponized Thickness, a artist on Twitter. So in case you wanted to know that, now you know. The other model painted right after this was this owl. Uh, for some reason, I really really wanted to use Army Painter Primer and it just settled really badly. This is a byproduct of me not shaking it and not using it forever. So it ended up being quite grainy and rocky, but I was adamant I was gonna paint this thing yellow and white because I wanted to paint something that had poor coverage to begin with. And honestly, I think I did a great job. It required a lot of coats of white and yellow to get it to where I want it to be. But after putting a base coat of white and then putting some yellow, the yellow popped and it looked great. By October, I started to paint less since we were prepping MPT and I had a lot to do. Uh, make sure to subscribe to Mana Potion Tabletop, by the way. But I got this Plague Marine and I banged him out. He was really great. I love the character and colors here that are in Plague Marines. I think they have a lot going on compared to a lot of the other Chaos Marines. This was also the first time I decided to try and go back and tackle non-metallic metals. And really, there's just a lot of strong lines that are separating the pieces where the metal would be. So this wasn't really a 10 out of 10 triumph in this particular skill set, but I was trying it out here. I also really wanted to try out different technicals and washes on this guy. So yeah, he's covered in blood and slime and rust and you know, it does cover up some mistakes, but here it's a much more cohesive, targeted use of washes versus just slapping it over the whole thing. Now, I didn't paint much over the summer or the holidays, but I did get a cheap airbrush over the holidays and I airbrushed my first Gundam, right? I also used the airbrush to do some Zenithal highlights on miniatures, but you know, that's kind of boring. Uh, however, this custom Zaku one is just too fun not to share and is a great example of how Gunpla helps you become a better mini painter. I should also mention over the holidays, I did paint a male pinup. So, you know, I, I need to point out I'm an artist, not a degenerate m most of the time. I, I always thought the night elves from WoW were ridiculously blessed with good looks. So I wanted to paint a night elf. And so I got this night elf professor. The entire base is filled with so much detail, it's insane. And this was really the first time I noticed that I actually need to start trying to paint in sub assemblies for some miniatures if I want it to look good. And it was December, so I was really just trying to bang this out to get some more reps under my belt. So some hidden items on this guy are just left unpainted. You can't really see it from most angles, but you can definitely see the line that the printer left on him. But he was a lot of fun to paint, and I enjoyed him quite a bit. The last mini I painted was an orc burner boy, starting the way I ended. Uh, painted partially on stream under duress, I should really exemplify how... Uh, you know, th this is an example of how the orcs have just developed in my army. You know, the carnival look, you got a lot more clown themes going on. The orc colors have become increasingly vibrant from the first time I've painted my orcs. I really enjoy the artistic uh, journey of painting orcs and how vibrant they've gotten for me. 
This orc is a great capstone to show my progress over the year being just completely different from the first orc I painted. Really, this whole artistic interpretations of how I paint the orcs comes from 2000s street art. I like really thick lines and really bold colors. Uh, Jamie Hewlett, who designed the Gorillas, the uh, pop art vinyl toys that are like pre-Funko Pops, I really enjoy those looks. Uh, De Blob, Jet Set Radio, if someone can help me find out what this really thick lined art style is called, that'd be really great by the way. Anyway, I like stuff that is bold and stands out, and I really think that a bolder color scheme for orcs helps them stand out from green and brown tabletops that you'd be playing the game on. Also, I think them being even more green than they should be makes them unnaturally extra and really highlights the personality that orcs have as these football hooligans who are just here to have a good time and not live a long time. So, and that's that's what I painted and how I've improved over the year. I don't really know if I've improved, but hey man, I guess you can let me know whether or not I've improved or not. In 2023, I wanna pursue more with my minis, become a better painter overall. I like the idea of making things really neon but still 3D, make them real but not of this dimension type thing. I spent a lot of time getting reps in and really trying to figure out what I enjoy about the miniature painting process. But for this next year, I'm planning on painting a mini a week, and I'm already a week behind, so one week's gotta have two miniatures. And I do plan on painting more than just as many as there are weeks in a year, but this is to get a baseline of practice in every day. If you'd like to see my progress on every miniature I paint every week, you can follow me over on Twitter at FPS Diesel. This doesn't mean I'm going to be focusing on my own style or developing what I like. I do want to practice other miniature styles in 2023, the heavy metal style, and explore more art movements of miniature painting to really become a better artist in this whole genre. I also want to explore more weird stuff. There are a few mini painters with really vibrant minis and some that just have very interesting ideas with how miniatures are painted. And it's something I hope to explore more. I don't think I'm an expert and any sense of the word. However, I hope my progress over the year can maybe show you where you'll be at in a year. And hopefully you don't get the envy that comes with looking at Instagram and seeing ridiculously smooth paints. I don't think I've gotten that smooth over a year, but you know, everything takes time, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. I already said that I plan on getting my golden demon and I know that'll come eventually. However, many of those painters have a decade or more on me. So the only way I can get there is through practice and trying my hardest. So without further ado, let's get started with painting the first miniature of 2023. 